Hello, friends. Today is part seven of the 30-day progress intervals. This is the 210th day of doing these 30-day videos. And there's been a lot of changes since part six. So let's jump right in it. Start off with this guy here. This is the Lichnochromis acuticeps, the Malawi gar. And uh, since putting the aragonite white sand in, this guy's undergone some color changing, turned a little more yellow, got some nice blues coming in, some red on his fin. Very nice fish. He is about nine inches right now. Let's check him out a while ago. Up next we have the Dimidiochromis strigatus, sometimes called the sunset hap. This is my tank boss. He's been a super chill tank boss. Um, every once in a while he has to you know, reassert himself, let others know he's still the boss. Namely, the uh, Malawi hawk I'll show you in a little bit, but yeah, this tank boss, and he's a good one, he's chill. So let's check him out about 210 days ago and then 30 day intervals. Here we have the Fusco. This is the Nimbochromis Fusco taniatus. Um, I would have to imagine this Fusco is probably the biggest fish in here. Um, I mean, overall biggest. Because I think the Malawi hawk is longer, but this Fusco is quite a bit thicker and taller. He once was tank boss. Uh, maybe that Rostratus is bigger. It's hard to say. But anyways, he was tank boss and then uh, he kind of let the reins go and the Strigatus took over. But this dude is chill. As big as he is, he's just a mellow fish. He has had massive amounts of growth, probably the most in here. You know, I got him when he was very small and he is humongous. It's hard to, it's hard to tell, but I mean, he's bigger than my hand. Um, let's check him out when he was a little squirt. Next up is the Fossil Chromis Rostratus. Um, since doing the white substrate, this is the, <coughs> this is the only fish that I feel uh, had a negative effect. Everyone else, you know, they all changed their color. Some of them for the better, most of them for the better. They weren't so black and muted out. But this guy, I think his color morph from the white sand was negative. Um, he still looks awesome. He still has that, you know, 
chrome look to him, but he was just more vibrant with black substrate. Um, yeah, he is, him or the Fusco is the largest in here. And I'm glad that both of the, those two are uh, very mellow. Like sticking himself in the corner over here. Go ahead, dude, get out of here. Check him out when he was littler. Let's check out this star sapphire. Beautiful chips coming out. Finally really starting to make that progress. Um, I've had this guy for a very long time since he was about an inch and a half to two inches. And I'd say now he's pushing six and a half or seven. Um, definitely one of the smallest fish in this tank, but I think he's so small that nobody views him as any sort of threat. So he's He's never picked on or nothing. Let's check him out when he was a little squirt. Next here's the Morai Dolphin. If you've been following along, you know that I, a couple, maybe a month ago, a month and a half ago, two months ago, something like that, lost all my files on this guy. So I'm starting to rebuild his photo albums. This was a Petco find. Got him on the donation for a couple bucks. I'm pretty happy with him. He's getting pretty large. Um, when I went from black sand to white, his blue really doled down, but he still looks cool. He's a nice addition. Has that unique appearance, which is kind of what I was going for with this tank, is I wanted all the rare or unique looking fish. So let's check him out. Here we have a fish in the Buchachromis family. This is the Buchachromis rhodosi yellow. Um, this fish is quite large. This fish, originally when I got him, maybe he was hormoned or maybe in the tank he came from the cellar out of was, you know, he was the dominant fish because he was blue and yellow and real vibrant. And uh, as soon as I took him over, he, he basically turned silver. And then when I went to the white sand, he got a little yellow back, but not much blue or anything. Um, and that's probably because in here he is nowhere near dominant. He's also still young. You can tell that by his anal fin, you know. And, He's pretty, he's about eight and a half inches, but these fish full grown are 14 to 16. So let's check them out when we first got them.
let's check this guy out. This is a Taniochromus holotania. And I would say this fish had one of the most positive impacts from the white sand. Um, it's being kind of weird right now. But this fish went from pretty much all black. And then when I put the white sand in, you know, he has that lateral bar, horizontal bar on his side. Um, on the top side of that, he's usually blue nowadays and yellow underneath. Right now he's, uh, kind of looks like he used to, but I swear in person, he, he looks cooler than that. <laughs> Let's check him out over the past several months. Next we have this Malawi trout. That's the Champsochromus cerealis. Very, very slow grower and extremely late bloomer for color. Um, you know, I got this trout when he was probably six inches and now he's probably eight and a half to nine inches not a drop of color whatsoever no matter how optimistic you think you are and you might see some color it's probably bouncing off the light because this guy he's got no color at all um, looks like the other day he kind of got picked on but otherwise, this guy just flies under the radar. I think uh, you know, he's not viewed as a threat by anybody. He's too puny, too skinny, too dull. Uh, that guy ain't stealing anybody's mate. Uh, let's check him out, though. Next we have the new hawk because as you all know the last hawk died. The last hawk we had that we had been growing out for forever died as a result from putting the 3D background in. I inadvertently stirred up a bunch of substrate and caused an ammonia spike and uh, thought I was on top of it. Everyone else survived except for the hawk. So here's the new hawk. Uh, this guy's about 10 and a half inches and he has lately been posturing up to take over as tank boss. And this, as you see here, the Strigatus is reminding him, look bud, not happening. I've been around way too long. So this Strigatus is uh, putting him in place which I'm happy for because I just put a new fish in and the hawk has been really pestering it. And uh, the Strigatus kind of nipped that in the butt, like not in my house. So there he is, that's the new hawk. All in line, bud. I'll show some pictures that I have of him when we got him.
Check this dude out. There's another fish from the Demidiochromus family. This one is quite a rare species. It's called the Coingi. Um, look at that pattern they have. That's just awesome. Pretty unique fish. This guy is an absolute monster when it comes time to eat. I mean, it's almost embarrassing for him. He just goes absolutely hog wild. Let's check him out. This here is my wild caught Tyrannochromus niger venner. One of the smaller fish, to, fish in here, um, probably around seven and a half to eight inches. Um, I don't know why, but it always feels kind of cool to have a wild caught fish and it actually thrives in captivity. So that's pretty exciting. Um, let's check him out when he was quite a bit smaller. Little side note too, um, he's not the smallest fish anymore in here, so he's trying to establish his pecking order. So hey, second to last is better than dead last. He also lost a lot of um, his vibrant appearance when the white sand went in, but that's all right. I'm still happy. And last but not least, we got one. Well, I've had him for about a month and a half. Um, this is a new Hawkliceps from Ron Cichlids. Shout out to those guys. They uh, they went out and looked in their grow out pond and found me one when they had none available on the website. So huge shout out to Hunter and Ron from Ron Cichlids. Uh, if you guys have any fish you're looking for, I highly recommend that company. But anyways, a Hawkliceps. This is a uh, Tyrannochromus maculaceps mixed with a uh, Aristochromus christii, Malawi hawk. So, hence the name Hawkliceps. I had to put this guy in a 300 gallon grow out tank by himself, put a little size on him. Um, got him up to about six inches, six and an eighth inches, and put him back in this tank yesterday. Then of course, you know, I left the lights off for a full day and monitored them. Um, the only fish that gave him any trouble was the Malawi hawk, which is three times bigger than him. But the Strigatus has been, you know, basically telling the hawk, not in my house. If anyone picks on somebody, it'll be me. And uh, that's about the end of the abuse. Now the hawk doesn't bother the hawkliceps. The Tyrannochromus nigerventer will uh, occasionally chase him off. You know, he's this guy's used to being the smallest, you know, in the pecking order. So he's like, hey, see an opportunity to uh, come up one rung. So I think that's what's happening there, but it's not uh, not causing any damage or destruction. The Hawkliceps certainly isn't in any danger. But that's about it, guys. That's uh, number seven of the series. 210-day progress.
man, it feels like yesterday we started doing this 30 day interval thing. Lots of changes if you go back to the first one. It's pretty remarkable. It's really cool to uh, look back at that first video and go, wow, look how small those were. Anyways, thanks for your support. Catch you next time.